Thank you for listening to shuhanarcharav.com. And sh- may one use grape juice for the four cups on the night of the Seder? Or must one or should one use wine? So the Alter Rebbe rules in chapter 472, Allah 27, and so is the accepted ruling amongst all Paiskim, that the laws of the four cups on the night of Pesach follow all the rules and regulations of what is kosher for Kiddush on any other holiday and Shabbos. Thus, if grape juice may be used for the four cups, follows the exactly same laws as on Shabbos and holidays, if it may be used for Kiddush, and we will now analyze whether grape juice may be used for Kiddush on Shabbos and Yantiv, and thereby consequently for the four cups. So we have a clear ruling in the Gemarim of Abbasra 97a, that whatever is kosher bidiyavit for Nesachim, for wine libations on the altar, is kosher lechatchili even initially for Kiddush. And thus it writes that grape juice, which in Halach is called Yain Megitoi, which is basically wine that is not yet ferme- fermented, which means grape juice, is valid even lechatchila for Kiddush, and thus it is permitted, says the Gemara, to squeeze grapes before Shabbos and Yantif, and make Kiddush on it, and so is recorded in the Paiskim, in the Shulchan of the Mechaber 272 Allah 2, and the Alter 272 Allah 2, without any opposing opinion. Thus, it is clear that 100% pure grape juice, taking grapes and squeezing them, even though it's not wine, has no alcohol content, is 100% kosher for Kiddush, and thus is also 100% kosher for the four cups of wine. On the night of Pesach. Nonetheless, the Paiskin records, so was brought in the Magan of Ram and in the Alter Rebbe, in 272, that it's a mitzvah min amuvchar to take specifically aged wine, which means wine that has an alcohol content, and not use grape juice. As wine is a more prestige drink, beverage, than is grape juice. So they novelize it, although the Talmud and Paiskin bring one may use grape juice, it's always a mitzvah min amuvchar to use wine. This is further emphasized in chapter 600, Allah 6 in the Alter Rebbe, where he writes that if one has wine available and grape juice available, he should not make Kiddush on the grape juice, being that it's a mitzvah namuchar to use wine, as we just said. Thus, to summarize, initially, mitzvah namuchar, it's best for a Jew who wants to do Hidr mitzvah to specifically use wine, which is grape juice with an alcohol content. If, however, wine is not available or he doesn't want to use wine for whatever reason due to the alcohol, due to health reasons, or regarding women and children, then one may use natural grape juice as we stated. Now, all the above sources only validate grape juice. That is pure grape juice. You took grapes at home and you squeezed it into juice. What about the store-bought grape juice that people purchase in stores? Kadem grape juice, Kasser grape juice, or any other company grape juice. So on the onset, those who are not aware of what goes through the processing of grape juice today in wineries will claim, what's the difference? Grape juice is grape juice. It's all the same thing. We have an explicit Gemara and Halach and Shulchan Aruch. You can use grape juice. Even the Chathil is just a mitzvah and a mochre to use wine. In truth, however, this is not correct. The grape juice referred to in the Gemara and the Shulchan Aruch is talking about one who took grapes and squeezed them. They do that as well in the wineries when they sell you your bottle of grape juice, but they do other things as well, such as pasteurization, such as additives, preservatives, sulfur, sodium benazate, potassium sorbate, and other preservatives that enter the wine, the grape juice. Now, is this difference a halachic difference? Does it change the status of validity of grape juice that we just learned? Depends who you ask. Some paiskim rule, some paiskim direinu, they rule that such grape juice is not grape juice at all. In fact, it should receive the blessing of shahako and becomes demoted to chamer medina, which is the status of coffee, tea, and beer regarding Kiddush and Avdallah. It is not considered wine at all, and it is not considered grape juice of the Gemara and the Shulchan Aruch. Why? Why does it get demoted just because of some preservatives? The 99% of it is grape juice. The reason is because some understand the whole reason that the Paiskim allow grape juice is because it can eventually become wine if fermented. But when it places preservatives into the grape juice, as Edwin who makes wine can tell you, that stops and prevents it from being able to become wine. And since its fermenting ability has been killed, it therefore loses its status of valid grape juice written in the Gemara. 
Sovels of Dvar Yeshua, Bermaisha Shvushitzchen, Nem Ravel Yashev, and Yaakov Yosef, and other Paiske Derein. And therefore they say, while you may use natural grape juice if you don't want to do the mitzvah and the and use wine, don't use grape juice bought from a store. For Kiddush, for Havdalah, or for the four cups of wine on Pesach, unless you need to use Chamer Medina, such as tea, coffee, and beer, and therefore grape juice would be no different than that. However, many other Paiskim argue on the above claim and say there is no difference between today's grape juice and previous times grape juice discussed in the Gemara and Shulchan Aruch, and the preservatives don't make any difference, they don't demote it to a lesser status. As once you squeeze those grapes in the winery and they were fit to become wine, they are now valid for Kiddush, even if later you add something to it which stops its fermentation abilities. So rules of Pesach Tzvi Frank and Har Tzvi, Rab Shlomo Zaman Orbuch and Mincha Shleimah, the Mincha Yitzchak, the Shevet Alevi, Rav Yosef Nichavadas, Mishnah Halachas, and many other Pesach Adereinu, and thus is the final widespread custom and ruling to allow even initially to permit using processed grape juice for Kiddush and the Four Cups, if you don't want to do the Mitzvah Namuvcher and use wine. Even according to the stringent approach, we can't forget that grape juice would nevertheless have the status of Chamer Medina, which would mean Bidiyeved, one would be Yitze, Kiddush, even in their opinion, using grape juice that's bought from a store. Now what about the Chabad custom and the suggested practice? So the Chabad Minig is to initially not make Kiddush on any grape juice, even natural grape juice, as we stated above regarding the Mitzvah Namuvcher to use actual wine, and so was the custom of the Rebbeim, and the custom in Lubavitch, to avoid using grape juice as much as possible. Nonetheless, in a time of need, if no wine is available, or if you don't want to drink wine due to the alcohol content, even according to Chabad custom, one may use grape juice, and so was done by the Rebbe and Friedrich Rebbe when they couldn't get wine of their liking for the four cups. They took grapes and squeezed them and used that juice for the four cups on Pesach. Nonetheless, based on everything we said above and the different debates and disputes, the following is the final suggested practice that should be followed vis-a-vis grape juice for using for Kiddush Havdalah and the four cups on Pesach. Mitzvah Amovcher, use actual wine that has alcohol content. If you don't want to or you can't, the next best step is to mix the wine with any grape juice and it's best initially to have a ratio of two-thirds wine, one-third grape juice, but you can even go down until you only have 17% wine and the rest all being grape juice in the mixture. According to Allah, that still maintains the status of wine and you still fulfill the mitzvah and a If even that is too much for you, then you can use the next best option, which is 100% natural grape juice that has no additives or preservatives. And if that too is not available, then you may use regular store-bought grape juice. As we already stated, the final ruling follows that it is valid for Kiddush, even the Chathila, and likewise for the four cups of wine. Thank you for listening to ShulhanArcharav.com. Our free services of making Torah knowledge available to the public depends on donors like you. Please help us continue our work through making even a small contribution at shuhanarcharav.com under the daily halacha dedication section or in the subscription page. Also, check out our online courses and many safarim available for purchase that will both enhance your Torah knowledge and help support our work.